continue working on this and one of the things we did was we disconnected this spring so we're going to reconnect the spring with a pair of pliers all right you don't have to use pliers if you don't want to i'm using them because well it'll just make my my life a little simpler <coughs> well maybe not i'm sure there's an easy way to do this that doesn't involve hurting my fingers but i don't know what it is at it and see if we can figure out how it actually went. Clearly this was not designed to be taken apart. And I'm sorry if that was hard for you guys to see what I did, but I just basically hooked that back up. All right, so at this point, now the door will stay shut and we're gonna go over to this side work. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna label these. So we're going to call this boost bottom top. And wouldn't you damn know it, one of them is in upside down. Unfortunately, the top's upside down, so I got to stop and deal with that. Damn it. So, um, yeah, that's my own fault. Let me get my tools and I'll deal with it right now. All right, so we're going to try to not take this all apart to do this. A pain in the ass. You shouldn't do it this way, but I'm going to do it anyway because, well, I'm kind of irritated at it, and I don't think I'll cross-thread it. And I didn't. So the next thing is to uh, put this in here, get the screw on the back started, and not cut myself. Oh, you got to be kidding me. So I'm just going to loosen that so I have a little wiggle room so I can see what the hell I'm doing. There we go. Just not my choice of ways to do this. So, keep in mind this oven is full of sharp parts, so I'm going to use my pliers to put this down there.
bright enough in here for me to see anything. So I'm going to use an, a little flashlight and adjust that angle. fingers hopefully that is the last time I have to deal with that all right so the documentation at this stage the online build guide leaves a lot to be desired um, just the way the web page is formatted uh, it, the images don't open up and you can't it, it's not a gallery it's just a bunch of images and when you click on them, it opens up the images, and most mostly they're large enough. Um, it just leaves so much to be desired. So you have to really study the images to figure out what the hell is supposed to happen. Um, So the good news is we get to reuse the sheathing. Not sure where, because again, the instructions don't really... You know, I'll let you guys see what I see. These are the images. Yeah, I don't know what this is supposed to do. I mean, okay, that, that got pulled through. And then this, um, not 100%, oh, I'm supposed to zip tie that down here, okay, and this is a nice large image here, uh, yeah, you really shouldn't do this unless this is wrong. Unless this connector is rated for double lugging, that is wrong. I seriously doubt it's right. What would be better is one of these crimp style connectors. that is rated to join multiple wires. So yeah, see, the, these are not rated for this. This is just wrong. This is an unsafe wiring practice. And while it might work, it's just wrong. What you should do is an individual lug, and even this is still not rated to be a junction. What you should do is pull these off to a pigtail and then screw them together with a connector that is rated for the temperature. Really, this should be using crimps like this. These are rated to join multiple wires permanently, securely, and electrically. Um, this is rated for one wire to be crimped into it, not multiple. So. All right, let me go see what I've got in my toolbox outside. All right, so it turns out I have some of those little white connectors. They're not the same size, but they they might work. So they're really close. They're like one size down. So anyway, let me let me start deciphering this and trying to figure out how the hell it's supposed to be wired. Um, so this is my boost element. One part of it goes to the white wire, which we're going to decide is this. And we're going to do some 
no idea. Yeah, you know, let's actually electrically test this. All right, because I can never remember this, neutral is the left side of the outlet, hot is the right side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, and if we had plugged it in, that would be neutral, this would be hot. So we're gonna find our Sharpie, and we're gonna put a little mark there to indicate that that's the hot side. And then we're going to use one of our cheap multimeters from Harbor Freight. It's like a $6 special. I think it was free. And we're just going to check to see if the white is really the white. First, we gotta get to it. Yep, okay. So that is the white wire, good. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim this. Right there looks good. And then we're gonna trim this one here. And we'll just save that, because that's nice high temperature wire. And I got a new wire stripper from eBay. doesn't work with this. Let's see if the old one does. Oh, that's fabulous. I think we're gonna need a little bit more wire than that exposed. There we go. That's just odd. Oh, this has got some kind of tension thing on it. Well, let's see if we crank it the hell down if it works. Sure, it works to cut it in half. Hmm. Yeah, that one doesn't like that wire. Okay, well. Good thing we kept the old one. All right, so we've got this. It needs a little bit of this, so we need to go ahead and strip this one as well. up these threads with my nippers. that, that, and we've got this, which needs to be trimmed there. So the way that the stock wires are set up, we're just going to go ahead and trim that there is that it goes in one element, comes out the other element. So, let's see what he thought we were supposed to do with this. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's the hot and this is the not. So we need these to be spliced together. Allergies are acting up today. All right, so this is high temperature wire, and that's high temperature wire, and that's high temperature. And this needs to come around here. Okay, and then one of these is going to be high temperature, or is going to be... that power supply. So at this point we need to get this power supply mounted in here. And we're looking for a really thin this color of the zip tie, but the holes that were called for are too small. It's fucking irritating. So, we're just gonna have to... There we go. A little brute, nothing a little brute force can't solve. Side, it will be nice and tight. Now I am putting this on the outside, it does not matter. Okay. So we'll deal with this later. And now we have this is where some of this goes. So we'll just leave that up there. And then I gotta go back and see which one's hot and which one's not. Okay, so the left plug, if this was plugged in, would be the neutral. So we're just gonna run with it. So we're going to get all of our neutrals together. And this really doesn't look right. This looks like way too much shit for these. But we'll see if we can get this to pull off. This looks like way too much shit for this. Yeah, none of this is right. So we're going to field modify this.
All right. So now we need all of these together. Nice mechanical bond, and then we will trim the end of this. Let's see if we can get this to fit. All right, that looks pretty good. So I don't have the proper crimping tool for this, but I have a pair of cheap knockoff vice grips and they've just became the proper tool for this. All right, that looks pretty good. I want to put some heat shrink on this, so I'll be right back. I'm going to go get that heat shrink, and then I'm going to see if I can prevent these splinters from finding my feet. All right, so I'm just going to slip a little piece of this over it just to tighten up my connections. I really need a piece of 3 8 but all I have is quarter and half, so we'll see if we can make this work. So that's done. And again, we will deal with this later. So let's get it out of the way for now. It just needs to go over there. That's the neutral. So, and again, I'm going to wire tie all this at a later point. So now we need to do the, this needs to come over. So let's see, we've got hot. Was I supposed to redo the bottom and the top? I don't have a wire for that. Hmm. Wheel? Hang on a second, I gotta look at some wiring. I did not realize that this wire here goes to this side and splits and handles both of these. So uh, these are actually 110 volt elements. Um, so what we need to do now is take this all apart. Because it's wrong. And again, uh, you know, I'll figure this out, but these are some crappy ass instructions at this part of the build guide. Let's see if we can get this apart gently and nicely. There we go. 
Well, the good news is that crimp's not coming off. That's a good sign, but we're gonna lose a little bit of wire here because, well, that's just the only way we're gonna get this apart. It did work, so that's a good sign. All right, so that's neutral. That's not. That's not. That's not. So this and this and this are what need to be joined together. Well, that makes this easier. So let's strip these back. Okay, so we're getting a little low on wire, so we're going to check this carefully. That's the supply. This one gets here, here, and here. And that'll give us that one, this. Yeah, okay. Now all that's good. Now we've got to get the hot wired in. All right, so we need to retrieve the lower element wire. enough this is easier with bright light all right okay so this one can definitely go here can go there and well that will fit yeah that'll reach so we can put that one here and this one here this is discompopulated yeah this one wants to go here so I I actually would prefer to put it here and just scratch this out and put a new label on it I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use the right side as my feed and the left side as my thing. Now there are different schools of thought on wiring. My belief is that fewer 
crimp on connectors is a better connection. So, I'm going to wire this the way I would wire household stuff because I think that is better and I'm not really interested in cheaper, faster. You know, crimp ons to me are for pre prefabricated assembly and speed of, of installation. This is actually set up for wire to just go under here, but it doesn't have to be like that. stay still this would be easier all right so that's going to make a nice good mechanical connection at least we think no that's not but it will because we're going to make it So we're just going to put the wire behind it. All right, so that's a nice, that's a good connection. Ain't nothing's going to happen there. So that's top. Yeah, this just leaves a lot to be desired in terms of wire routing for working on this. this is an AC device so it really doesn't matter which side you you connect And again, there are other ways to do this. I, I respect that. I just, this is how I'm doing it because, well, I think this is electrically sound and uh, I think grip on connectors are shit for the most part. And as 
y'all can see I have enough trouble just getting this shit to go where I want it to go. That's, that's good there. Now this needs to pick up power and then we need power here and here and here and we're going to get it from here. So Just notice he has his hacked up backwards in the in the picture because this is the neutral. If you turn it around, this is the neutral. So it needs to go to the white wire and this is the hot, which needs to go to this whole tree. So uh, let me see if I've got any more hot, high temp wire. Here. All right, so I'm going to use some of the wire from the oven. I know it's rated for the current. All right, that's going to go there. And then this is going to go there too. This would really be better if I could just bring these off the SSRs directly. Let me make sure I didn't get a piece of wire with this. It's breaking the wires, which is what I was afraid of. And I think it'll be okay. So that's our boost element. going to order some high temperature wire and do this correctly because what I'm doing right now is I don't, I don't think this wire I'm using is rated for what I'm asking it to do.
Okay, so I went ahead and looked this up, and as long as it's 24 gauge or better, it is um, rated for 3 amps. So let me look and see what... This is 18 gauge wire, so I'm, what I'm about to do will be fine. So it's a 350 watt boost element, and I need for it to deliver um, much less than that. So that's three amps. It's 2.97 to be precise, but we'll call it three. So we're going to tuck that in there. This is going to be messy. So we're going to do this. We'll twist these together and then ask it to make a little loop. this over here and ask it to make a little loop. Oh, that, that one actually won't be this big pain in the ass. And again, this is not the best way to do this, but this will work. In some fantasy in China, this is rated for 25 amps as a terminal. So what we've done is we brought our hot wire in and we've come to this terminal and then we're supplying off here and we've just kind of tucked under there and then we're supplying to this. I, I feel like this is questionable but it's rated for the capacity and then this is our neutral which goes down to here and it goes to there and it goes across off to there. It would be better if this piece of wire wasn't here but I'm not going to redo this because that's a nice factory crimp. This is good. That's a factory crimp. Um, ideally, I'd have a piece of wire like this coming off of each of these, going to here with this, all crimped into one nice crimp. So what we need to do now is tidy this up with some zip ties. So um, I'm going to do that, and then I'll come back on camera. I don't, I don't see the value in having you guys watch the pain of me doing this. Um, yeah, that, that's just going to be awful.